Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. everybody. Merry Christmas. There's a lot of you guys out there. Good to see you guys this morning. Hey, so I'm Joel, and we're going to continue. Uh, this is a final installment in our series called Let It Go. If you're visiting, you're like, why are they so into Frozen? It's because of the theme of the series, which is Let It Go. So we thought that would be appropriate. Um, we were going to do it during the worship time, but we thought, that's kind of weird to sing that for worship music. But anyway, uh, that was funny. But just so you know. Let it go. But let it go. I was talking to a guy this week, and he's like, you know, what makes a really good speaker isn't that they make people laugh. It's how quickly they recover when what they just said is dumb. <laughs> I was like, anyway, got to recover. OK, so anyways, we're doing the series Let It Go. And um, this is the last installment we're going to talk today uh, about letting go of your preconceived ideas of God and how he should work. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for that thunderous response. <laughs> so. Anybody ever, any, anybody ever had this thought at some point this year? Or maybe in, the, in like, it's the thought your whole life is, it's never going to change. Oh, yeah. You ever had that? If you ever had kids, you know that thought. Right? If you've ever carried a child, I've never carried a child, but I've heard from my wife that you're like, the nine months is like the first three months, you're like, oh, this is so sweet and so precious. And then like the next three months, you're like, Okay, all right. And then by the, like, by the time the baby comes, you're like, just get this baby out of here, right? I, I hear that. And then, then the, the, the child, you know, those first few months of having a child or neighbors across the street, they have a brand new baby and they're like, we're not getting any sleep. And it's like, we're your regular hours. And in every season of life, we have these, these, these situations where we look at them and we're like, ah, oh, it's never going to change. And I, I had that this week. Uh, Monday, I was so frustrated and, and I was just, down and discouraged. I was, Marcus and I were talking that week. He said that, I was like, how's your, how's your year been? And he's like, it depends on the day. I'm like, yeah, I can relate to that. Like some days I'm like, I'm a victor, man. I'm a champion. And other days I'm like, oh my gosh, let's just get it over with. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's get it over with. So uh, I was having one of those Monday and my wife, who's the rock there at the, everybody thinks I'm the rock. Actually, she's the rock at the house. Uh, she tells me, she's like, you need to pull yourself together. She says, it's Monday. You always are bummed on Monday because you put out a lot of energy on Sunday and you need to just chill on Monday. It's going to be OK. And I'm like, it's not going to be OK. <laughs> Nothing's changing. We're trying to make plans for next year. And there's like, nope, nope, nope. It's like walls in front of us. And, and I, everything we love to do, it's looking like it's been, it may not happen next year. And we're like, it's, it's never going to change. And then, you know, there's the promise of the vaccine for COVID. And everybody's like, it's, it's going to change now. I'm like, I don't think it's going to, I don't know, right? Because you hear all these people saying, well, the vaccine's no good and whatever. I mean, you just look at life and you go, is it ever going to change? Every one of us in our life, we've got situations this morning, if you think about it, and you're going, it's never going to change. Another Christmas and I'm still single, right? Another Christmas and my son or daughter still won't come back to be with us, even at Christmas, Another Christmas and my son or daughter is still addicted to drugs or is addicted to whatever they're addicted to. Or, um, it's never going to change. Ever, we, we all get to a place where we're thinking it's never going to change. We get tunnel vision focused on this, this idea that it's just never going to change. And, and here's the crazy thing. Eventually, it does change. And then what ends up happening is we look at we look back at the days we're complaining about now and we go, oh, remember the good old days. <laughs> Oh, man, it was so simple back then. And all the time you're in that season, you're like, oh, it's never going to change. <laughs> this is my life. And, it's, and then you're like looking back and going, oh, oh, it was so much easier back then. I'm like, actually, it wasn't easier. You just forgot how hard it was because everything changed. And this is the life we live. We live through seasons and seasons change and things change. And sometimes they're super long seasons and sometimes they're cold and dry and ugh, you're like, get me out of this season. And then there's other times that are really sweet, wonderful seasons. And, and the, the challenge is there's a blessing and there's a burden for every season that we're in. 
And so you got to embrace the blessing and look for it. But then you also got to rec recognize you got to shoulder the burden. And one of the most important things I think we can do when we get into this mindset is we've got to be super careful about what we're saying and what we're thinking. Because here's the thing. When you start thinking, it'll never change. It can never change. Here, I, I'm living testament of this, and you are too. Everything can change overnight. Yes. We've seen things change for bad overnight, but you've also seen things change for good overnight. And that's what happened with me this week. Monday, I was like in the depths of despair, to put it in Anne of Green Gables terms. And Tuesday, I get three phone calls that I've been waiting on for months, and everything started clicking in motion for some things to happen next year. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so life is so good. What a difference from Monday to Tuesday. But here's the thing. On Monday, my wife, she had to remind me, just zip, zip it. Just shut up. Shut up. You're not in a good state of mind right now. And every one of us, we get to a point where we're not in a good state of mind. And the best thing we can do is just go. Amen. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today because here's, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. Don't ever forget that. And we're looking around and going, oh, it's impossible. It's, too, it's way too late for that to happen. There's no way. And man, there's just too many years that we've been separated. There's no way that God could bring us back together. Uh, there's just too much water under the bridge, too much hurt, too much pain. I could never forgive them, whatever it is. I could never be back in right relationship with them. My finances, man, it's never going to change. I just, I, you know, I never was able to go to college and I'm just stuck working these dead end jobs the rest of my life or whatever it is. And, and you've got these things and you're saying these things to yourself and in the meantime, God's saying, hey, listen, don't you realize that I can do whatever I want in your life whenever I want, however I want? And here's the thing about it. There ain't nothing anyone can do to stop him when he decides to move. Now, a little qualifier because there's some Bible scholars in the room. There, ha there were moments when God said he was going to do something and then through the righteous prayer, a, person, a prayer of a righteous person, he actually held back on what he was going to do. So prayer does impact things. But in the big scheme of things, God's going to do what he is planning to do. And, and here's the good news for you. He's always at work in your life bringing about his purposes. And his purposes for you are so good. In fact, he's telling you, he's saying, if you just knew what I had for you and you, and you would just shh, 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 stop complaining, stop saying it's never going to change, and maybe just sit back and watch, you might be amazed at what I you will be amazed at what I can do in your life. There's this verse in Habakkuk that I love. And he's talking about how all this bad stuff is happening around and how all these wicked people seem to be like winning the, all around him and they're getting their way and all these people are doing wrong or getting away with it. And, and this is what it says. Habakkuk, he says this, he says, but listen, I know you see all this stuff around you, but don't ever forget this. The Lord is in his holy temple. So let all the earth keep silence before him. Yes. <laughs> Silence is awkward, isn't it? We live in such a loud world. If, if somebody's not talking to us, we're talking to ourselves, aren't we? Yeah. If you've got kids, you're like, silence is not a thing you want to hear. Silence, like, it's been way too quiet up there. What's about to go down? Silence. It's this awkward thing. I'll never forget a few years ago, uh, we were, I was leading a hiking team through Scotland, and I booked these a surprise trip for Emily on the back end of it to, to Holland, to the Netherlands. Her family is from the Netherlands and there were some families she'd never met before. And I booked this whole trip through her mom and we got there and we got picked up and we realized that the people we were staying with spoke no English. <laughs> and we didn't speak Dutch. Man, talk about an awkward time. We would just sit in their living room and they'd look at us. <laughs> We'd look at them. And then they'd venture to say something like, we Disneyland past. I'm like, oh, you went to Disneyland in the past. Oh, awesome, right? And I started to realize, man, 
I sure use words a lot of times to buffer uncomfortableness in my life. When, when something's uncomfortable, what do we do? We just kind of start talking, start talking. You talk to yourself or you talk to other people and, and we start talking. And, and here's the thing about words. Words have a lot of power. In fact, this is some deep stuff here, but you know, words can actually speak things. When God created the earth, he spoke the earth into existence with words. And there's power in the words you speak. And a lot of times the best thing you can do when you're looking around and going, man, this isn't going well. This is awkward. This is very uncomfortable. I don't like how this feels. It's just, shh, shh. And we're going to look at a story of a mor- this morning of a guy who learned that lesson. He was, he was actually forced to learn that lesson when uh, he had a wild, crazy experience happen to him. It's the, the, the father of a guy named John the Baptist. We don't hear much about him, but he's the first guy mentioned in Luke, this story. And he had an interesting experience with learning how important it is to be silent when you're waiting on the Lord to do something that you think is impossible. This is how we pick up the story. In the days of Herod, the king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron. Okay, so Aaron was the first priest of Israel when God established the priesthood. Aaron was the guy. And so these are like super religious people. Okay, these are good, solid, religious people. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God. Now that didn't mean they didn't mess up or sin. It just means they were pursuing what was right in God's eyes. They were walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. This is inspiring to me because, you know, a lot of times you do what's right and you're faithful and you see all the people around you that are doing what's wrong and they seem to be getting away with it and you're paying the price for doing what's right. And you're going, God, what's going on here? What's the deal? Where's your justice? I've talked to a lot of people this year who are walking away from the faith and they tell me this. They say, I just don't understand why God would allow all this to happen. And I say, yeah, it's really hard to trust God when he doesn't give you everything you want. And a lot of times we find that many times what we're, what we're wanting from God is, is we follow him because he gives us good things. And a lot of times he'll, will be moments, times in your seasons in your life where he says, are you going to follow me be, even if I'm not giving you exactly what you think you need or want? And that's where the test really happens. This is where we see who's really a follower of Jesus. Because he's got plans that are bigger than your plans. And are you going to trust him? And a lot of times we start talking and going, well, you know, if God loved me, he would have this or that. And we don't, and God's like, we're going to see what happened here with Zechariah. But it's just encouraging to me because here's some good people that are doing the right thing and God's not coming through the way they, th- they had hoped he would come through. But he stays faithful and keeps doing his work, right? So here's what happens. Now, while he was serving as a priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Now, back in those days, they had this temple and there was these different parts of the temple that certain people couldn't go to. And there was this one place called the Holy of Holies. And this is where they got the presence of God actually dwelled. When Jesus came, the presence of God actually started dwelling, living in us. But back in those days, there was actually a tangible presence of God. It was so strong in that one room, they could just feel it, that whenever they would send a priest in there, the, the, the legend has, they would send the priest in with a rope tied around their leg. So if they died while they were talking to God, nobody would have to go in there and, and potentially die also talking to God. They could just haul him out by a rope. It's a real thing. It was so intense. They would tie the rope around his leg. And so this is what's happening. Like this guy's getting his moment. He's on his shift. His shift has come up to go and offer incense before the Lord. And uh, he's doing his job. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. So he walks into this dark place and waiting for him there is an angel. And an angel appeared to him, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So he's going about his normal day, maybe thinking about his wife, how's she doing back home? And all of a sudden the angel shows up. And what do we know what happens whenever people see angels? They get scared. scared. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and fear fell upon him. And what do the angels always have to say? But the angel of the Lord said, don't be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will call his name John. Now, this is fascinating to me, okay? 
Your prayer has been heard. Was he still praying for something that he knew was impossible? If his wife was past childbearing age, he knew that and he was still praying for it. That's some faith right there. If you really believe God can do the impossible, you keep praying, especially when it's impossible because you're like, oh, it's going to get good now. He's going to do what, there's just no doubt that he, once he does it, there will be no doubt he did it. So he's praying, right? You will call his name John. And Zechariah said to the angel, well, how will I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife is advanced in years. Now this is fascinating because an angel of God is standing before him and he's still got doubts. And don't we all do that sometimes? Yes. Like the miracles, like amazing, something's happening and we've still got doubts. Yeah, but God, how, what, what, uh, uh. So the angel says to him, dude, I'm an angel. I hang out with God. That's my translation. And I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. He's like, you think I came here on my own? I showed up here because God's got a message for you. And since... And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place because you didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And all of a sudden, Zechariah can't talk no more. And the people were waiting for Zechariah and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. He lost his ability to speak. He had to stay silent. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple. So he had to start making signs to them and he remained mute. And when his time of service ended, he went back to his home. Can you imagine his, him coming home and unable to speak? His wife's like, what did you do? Like, what happened? Well, I talked back went to an angel, right? That's what got him in trouble. He, just, he can't speak. And after these days, his wife, sure enough, Elizabeth, she conceived. I think this is a powerful lesson for us because a lot of times when we can't figure out how God's going to do something, we just start talking. We get on Facebook and start complaining about our life. We start talking to others. We start trying to explain things ourselves. And some people, when things don't go like you're, they're supposed to go, like this year, you're saying, oh, man, is it ever going to change? It's never going to change. What do you do? You say, well, I guess I'll just live it up with what I can do now and numb the pain. And so you just drink yourself into oblivion or find some sort of drug that can give you pleasure. You binge out on Netflix or Hulu or whatever you're watching, Disney Plus. You just sit there binging out on all these things because it's like, well, it's never going to change. So why not just make the most of what I've got now? Or some people, some people try and solve it in their minds with theories about how God works. They get into the theology of God's sovereignty. Oh, I understand why it went down this way because God's sovereignty is X, Y, and Z. And then we're like, oh, I don't know about that. And We've all got these ways to, to, to kind of make it work in our mind. And here's the thing. I don't, I don't think God needs you to come up with an explanation for him. I think he just wants you sometimes to go, Shh. Shh. can't figure out why you're still single. Shh. Can't figure out why your kids still haven't come home. Shh. Instead of trying to manipulate and talk them into it. Can't figure out why you just can't seem to get ahead. You know, one job after another, you're struggling with it, and maybe there's something you need to work on, or maybe it's God's working something in you through it. Shh. Actually, if you shh, that can probably keep you from getting a lot of you from getting fired in many cases, <laughs> in the things you say that you get, get you in trouble. And so many times, God's just like, "Shh, I'm working on something here. Don't go messing it up." And sure enough, this is what happens. The baby's born. And they say, hey, what do you want to name your kid? And his mother said, no, I want him to be called John. And all the people there, the midwives and everybody are like, John? But aren't, you're supposed to name your firstborn after your, your husband, Zechariah. And they said to her, none of your relatives is even called by this name. Why are you going to call him John? So they made signs to his father who still couldn't talk. <laughs> nine months. Can you imagine the fear? I would be starting to get afraid after nine months. to be like, man, that's what I get for talking back to an angel. I may never talk again. And they made signs to his father inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet. And he said, his name is John. And in that moment, the promise was fulfilled. And they all wondered. But immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed. And he spoke blessing to God. There's a lot of uncertainty in this world right now. There's a lot we can't explain. There's a lot as we look into 2021 and go, is it going to change? 
Is it ever going to change? Some of you are looking at Christmas again this year and you're just dreading it. You're like, is this, is this pain and this grief that I feel ever going to go away? It just, it just comes on me so heavy at Christmas. Some of you are wondering if you're ever going to get past the financial struggles you're in. And I'm telling you this, one touch of God's favor can change it in an instant. So stay faithful. Shh. And shh. And watch the deliverance of the Lord in your life. Because the Lord is in his holy temple. He is working his purposes in your life. He's going to take care of it. Don't mess it up by talking yourself out of it or trying to rationalize it. Because God can do anything he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. And when he decides to move, you're not going to stop him. So stay in faith. Just stay in faith. And as we go into 2021, stay in faith, man. He's got something. He hasn't stopped working. You can't see it, but he's always doing a million things. You see maybe two or three of them. But he's working. Don't give up on the faith. Keep the faith. Stay strong. And get rid of your pre let go of your preconceived ideas about how God's going to work because he's going to come through in ways you never, ever saw coming. And if you're too busy jabbering, you may miss it. But if you can sit and say, all right, Lord, I don't understand why my son is still doing this or why my daughter is still doing this or why I just can't seem to get ahead in the finances or I don't understand why you took them from me or why that relationship ended. But I trust you. So I'm just going to be quiet here. Sit and watch as you work all things together for my good. You receive that? I think that's going to be our message for part of our message for 2021. Just sit back and watch to see what the Lord does because he doesn't do crazy stuff like this without some big purpose he's working on. So hold on tight. So let me pray for you guys. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.